it was really special. The time that I got to spend with them was really, really special. And I will never regret one minute. At times it was hard and at times I wished for my autonomy and my own space and and stuff like that. But, you know, in, in the end, everything was worth it. Hello, my friends. How are you? Thank you very much for checking out this video. This is not going to be one of my regular videos where I'm happy and laughing and making fun of myself and laughing with you guys. It's going to be a story time and um, it's one that I need to share because as the title says, everything is changing. I look a mess and behind me is a mess and you know what? I don't care. I even think my camera's crooked right now and I I don't care about that either. Um, this video, I don't think there's a snowball's chance in hell that I'm not going to cry during this video. So if you guys want to check out and, and watch my next video where I am back to myself, I will completely understand. Um, I sound the way I do because I am mentally, physically, emotionally exhausted down to my soul. I had recorded this video. This is going to be a bit of a different one, but I recorded it doing a get ready with me. Recorded half the video and then I got up and came back and forgot to hit record and I recorded like I'd say a good hour's worth of video without actually recording. My throat's really dry. And honestly, I was really upset at first, and I said, I'll just do another get ready with me. But um, I decided I, I didn't have it in me because um, today is the eve of my moving. It's currently about 11 o'clock. Um, I have to get up at 4.30 in the morning to finish up some things and get ready to transport the cats and everything. And I'm probably not even going to be able to go to sleep because I am so far away from being done with what I have to do. I just got out of the shower, as you can tell, because um, I, I needed it to wake up a little bit. It actually just made me more tired, I think. I'm actually glad that, as I said, that that video didn't come to fruition, because I think this is going to be more true to myself and, and everything that I have to say. And I'm hoping that you guys will be kind because I'm going to be talking about a lot of things that I'm not used to admitting and I'm not used to really sharing. I share a lot of my life with you guys, I know that. And I'm really glad that I do because I've built such amazing relationships with so many of you and I'm so, so grateful for that. So where do I begin? You guys obviously figured out and that I am moving. That's why I haven't posted because I've been packing and trying my best. Uh, to get everything done, 50 years worth of stuff in this house. I really underestimated what it was going to take, not only physically, but mentally, what it was going to be like. On top of everything else, for the last two months, cat hair, of course, I have been using um, a cane. I am having a bad exasperation or a flare-up of my MS. This was not a good time for it to happen because of I'm doing all of this alone. And I've had extreme neuropathy from my waist down. My feet are the worst. There's pain, there's numbness, there's an indescribable feeling that is sometimes intolerable. I've never let my MS stop me before and I'm sure not gonna let it stop me now. And I don't know how I've had the resilience to keep going. So I found my apartment about a month ago. After, I think I looked at over a hundred online and many of them were uh, not good because they didn't take cats or they were out of my price range. Or they said that they required a minimum credit score, which I didn't have 
I looked at, I'd say, about 15 or so. I got to turn down for probably 10. A couple of them just would not have worked either logistically or space-wise or accommodation-wise as, uh, in other words, um, having to park far away and stuff and not having parking. And then I saw this one apartment where I'm moving and I thought it was cute. It's not ideal, but it's, um, it's cute. It's, it's a cute apartment and it felt homey and it's the closest to my job. It's seen that far, thus far. It's a little bit, quite a bit more money than I wanted to spend and actually it's going to be almost 70% with um, the utilities and stuff, almost 70% of my salary. So I liked it and I applied for it, it, it and I initially got turned down. Um, the owners had gone with somebody who made more money and um, I accepted that and I continued to look uh, to no avail. And about a week and a half later, I got the call that she decided to let me have the place. And I was elated. Uh, first, I was shocked and all of a sudden, everything became real. You know, it's like I knew that I had to move, but all of a sudden, it became real. It became tangible. And um, I didn't know how I felt at first. I had a lot of emotions running through me. But I said, okay. I mean, I had started to pack before, um, but I didn't have that urgency. And so I knew I had 30 days. So I started to pack and my MS symptoms got worse. And um, I just kind of pushed on through. Uh, but there were days where I could barely manage to do anything. You know, walking with the cane, trying to pack, trying to carry boxes and doing it alone. Yes, I, I am alone. I think you guys figured that out by now, but I'm telling you that I am no longer in a relationship. As I went through the house, it stirred up so much anguish and an emotion in me that I'd had before, but it, it exasperated, it, it brought it really to the forefront. Let me explain a little bit about this house. My parents and us, we moved into this house almost 50 years ago. My parents were married for 66 years and they grew up next to each other. My dad grew up in this house, so it belonged to my grandparents. And my mom grew up next door, so they knew each other from seven years old. So they knew each other for about 80 years of their life. And my dad grew up here and then he went into the Navy and my parents got married and they moved away and we lived in a couple of apartments. And then when I was almost seven, my parents bought this house, but it was a small house, it was a little farmhouse. This house was built in the, it was registered in the mid 1800s. The house has been in my family for about 100 years or so. We moved in in September, and in two months, my dad, with his two jobs, on the weekends and at home when he got home from work, he added on two bedrooms, an attic, a patio, rebuilt the fireplace because it was crumbling and he built it from the original bricks from the fireplace that was here from the 1800s. In two months, my dad made this a home for us. And I lived here until I got married. I got married out of my house. It was kind of, a, it's kind of an Italian tradition that um, my parents were kind of insisted upon. And it was okay, I was glad to. And I was married. And then when I got divorced, I lived a bunch, bunch of places. And you know, never, all the places that I moved, they never felt like, they never felt like home. I stayed in each one for probably about a year, year and a half. Then 10 years ago, I decided to move back here because my parents are getting up there in age and 
I figured it could be mutually beneficial. I could come back home and maybe feel at home again. I could help them out at the same time. Well, I did, and it was difficult at first. I went back to my childhood bedroom with my childhood furniture, a twin-size bed coming from a king-size bed that I had when I lived on my own. Not many people in their early 40s, I was 41 when I moved back here. It's very rare that people at that stage of their life get to experience their parents in a different light. Um, experience them as not friends, but you relate to them on a different level. And I did, and it was really special. The time that I got to spend with them was really, really special. And I will never regret one minute. At times it was hard, and at times I wished for my autonomy and my own space and, and stuff like that, but you know, in, in the end, everything was worth it. If you don't know and you're new here, first of all, thank you for stopping by. In the last three years, I've lost everything. Everything I loved, everything I valued. Everything that meant something to me. First, I lost my Jack cat. And if you look back to my videos, you will see my Jack the cat. I lost my Jack. A few months later, my sister died and it was my second sister that passed away. I lost my first sister 18 years ago. And when I lost my second sister, I didn't think I could recover. And I still haven't. And five months later, my mom died. That's when COVID hit. And she died of COVID. And she didn't want to die. My mom fought so hard to live. And I lost my mom. You no, know, we all know that we're going to lose our parents. You think you can prepare for it, but nothing can explain what happens when you lose your mom. It's your mom. And I was lost without her and my sister. My mom and I, as adults, we began to have a really special relationship. You know, we clashed as teenagers because I was just like her. I was just like her. I looked like her. And we were very much alike. And when my mom died, my dad went from a very functioning person that he was with my mom, going out every day, going shopping, doing all the things. And he just was lost without her. And he couldn't seem to go on. His health declined, his mental health declined. And he didn't want to be here anymore. And it was hard, it was hard sometimes. I used to get so frustrated, but at, because it was hard, because I wanted him to be happy. I wanted him to live. Even though it was out without my mom, I wanted him to live a happy life. And he could. And I did the best I could to keep him happy. And then my dad died a couple of months ago. And everything changed. <laughs> and I knew it was going to, but I wasn't prepared for what was going to happen. And I wasn't prepared to face all this alone. <sighs> going to work at both of my jobs and coming home and doing nothing, but packing and crying and packing and more crying. Because everything I touch 
has their memory in it. And I can't keep the house because it's too much for me to take care of. Part of me feels like I'm betraying them by leaving this house behind. At least try to be strong. I'm human and I'm fallible and not perfect. But I've tried. I've never let things defeat me. But I feel defeated by all of this. I'm starting a new chapter in my life. It's like my old life will no longer exist and it won't. I should feel happy and I should feel blessed that I got the time with them that I did and that I have a fresh start. It's hard to feel that way and I'm struggling through it. I know that there's another side. I know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. That all sounds very cliche, but it's true. I know that there's another side. And I'm gonna make it to the other side. But it is hard to do it alone. And I'm so grateful that I have this channel that I've built relationships with you guys. That you've been part of my journey, part of my story. We've laughed together, we've cried together. And I know that one day I'm gonna wake up and look back on everything and think about this house and my parents and my sisters and my cats and my backseat, don't forget my backseat. I lost my Baxter cat a month before my dad died, not even. I know that I'm gonna look back one day and I'm gonna be able to smile and feel grateful for what I did have. But I'm not there yet. All I can say is thank you guys. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. Thank you for bringing me joy these last five years that I've had my channel. I couldn't have done it without you because this, this platform, this, my channel has kept me sane. This video probably isn't going to be posted for a little while because I have so many videos backlogged. I am praying for that positive light that I can that I can see and that I can grasp onto and that I can hold on to. You know that things will get better. I just have to keep reminding myself. I'm gonna take you on my journey tomorrow. I'm gonna to film the whole experience and um, we can go through it together. I wanna to thank you guys so very much for taking time to watch this. Thank you for being a part of my life and um, I look forward to uh, to the new adventure but I'm so tired and uh, I'm probably gonna try to grab an hour or so of sleep and then get right back at it thanks for listening guys I love you and I'll talk to you soon bye